Welcome back to another edition of Our City. As we roll into the summer and school is ending, I hope everyone stays safe and stays, uh, stays with a lot of water and fluids. And the summer should be an exciting time for us here in the city of Elizabeth. On Wednesday, June 27th at 10 o'clock in the morning, the graduation ceremony for Elizabeth High School will take place at Williams Field located on Clarkson Avenue. I believe almost a thousand students are going to graduate from our different high schools this year. Congratulations to all of the high school graduates. And on Friday, June 29th, at 8 o'clock in the morning, the Greater Elizabeth, Chamber of Con Ta Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce and the Union Township Chamber of Commerce will hold their 22nd annual legislative breakfast. This event brings together city, county, state, and federal officials. It discusses recent activity in these levels and how they may affect their businesses and their towns. It's held at the Boys and Girls Club of Union County located at 1050 Jeanette Avenue in Union. For more information, please call the chamber at 908-355-7600. And later that afternoon around four o'clock, I'm gonna kick off a basketball game for Karen Civil Day at the Mickey Walker Recreation Center located at 800 Anna Street. For more information, please call 908-820-4032. If you need any more information on these issues or any other additional information, please call our public information office at 908-820-4132. Please stay with us after these messages. There'll be more of our city. Creating tomorrow's jobs today. Kane University. Welcome back to our city. I'm pleased to be joined for this week's show by Jamel Holly. Uh, Mr. Holly is the assemblyman from the 20th Legislative District, representing the city of Elizabeth, the city of Roselle, the city of Hillside, and the city of Union in the state legislature in Trenton. Assemblyman Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. It's good to see you. You too. Have we done this before? We have. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while, all right? It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while. I think my first week in, uh, in the legislature, uh, about three and a half years ago, I attended the show. Thank you for the end. Uh, Is it that long already? It's been that long. Jeez. And I'm um, 40 bills signed into law by both a Republican and a uh, Democratic governor, bipartisan, and we're 40 bills uh, later. Uh, down in Trenton, uh, 40 bills later, and down in Trenton, working very hard for the city of Elizabeth and the rest of the 20th Legislative District. Now, you didn't wake up one morning and become the assemblyman, so tell us, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about your history. You, you, you've been active since a young man in political life. Tell us, tell us how you got started yeah, in Roselle. Yeah, so I started in Roselle, the borough of Roselle, your neighboring town here. We border each other. I started as a young councilman, being elected at age 23, and I served seven and a half years on the city council there. And then shortly after that, I ran for the mayor, which uh, emulate you and your new energy slogan, uh, just by being next door, growing up, knowing you as a young mayor. Uh, served for mayor about three and a half years, and then the vacancy opened up for the legislature, and with your support and many others throughout uh, the city of Elizabeth, the councilman and other officials throughout the district supported me, and I've been down there three and a half years now, working very hard. Now, we have three representatives. We have Senator Joe Crine, Senator Annette Keanu, and some of them in Jamel Holly. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that works, the two members of the Assembly and the member of the Senate. You work with each other for the benefit of the district. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Senator Crimes from Union Township and uh, Assemblyman Keanu, my running mate, is also from the city of Elizabeth and I hail from uh, Roselle. And we work collectively in partnership with each other to help service the district. And you've been a, an outstanding partner with letting us know the needs of uh, the local government. and and. It's pretty interesting for me to go down there as a local official uh, because all politics are local and it all happens locally. And so with having that knowledge and having your partnership, uh, it gives us a better understanding of what we need to do, what we need to be voting for, what we need to be advocating for so that we can provide those resources to come back to the district. So tell us about a few things that you're, uh, it's on your plate in the 20th Legislative District. Uh, what's going on? currently so uh the dmv is very important mayor you and i've had s several conversations i think the first week that governor murphy was installed as the governor you sent the letter off right away saying we want our dmv back in the city of elizabeth well christy and, screwed us yeah you know just uh, for political purposes just took it out of straight elizabeth for political for no purpose, purpose for yeah. just for political purposes but you've been very patient 
Um, and I think that the closure of Elizabeth resulted in uh, hor horrific you know, lines in the other places in Rawway that they're experiencing and other places in Newark that really had an effect on the, the region. And so uh, with your advocacy um, and with uh, us having our conversations with the front office, I'm proud to let you know that it's in this year's budget uh, to uh, bring the DMV back to the city of Elizabeth. And I know that will satisfy a lot of the residents who live in the county and live in this region. I and mean, for you as well, because it's a so service. So you were advocating for this on the assembly side, Senator Krein on the Senate yes. side, and together you were able to uh, make sure it was in the budget language. Yes, and I'll be proud to be voting on it very soon. Yeah, that's, that should be coming up. Yep. Let's hope it gets true at some crossed. point. <laughs> <laughs> Seven-year fight. Uh, you were involved in this issue on the sports betting. Senator Lesniak, when he was our senator, was the sponsor of the bill. I think he was involved in it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you get involved, and what was your role in getting this legislation passed? Well, as you mentioned, Senator Lesniak, who's a former colleague of ours, uh, has been advocating this for years. Uh, and it was a win-win situation for the state of New Jersey. Why we were uh, not allowed to do that has been known to me, but he took the fight to the Supreme Court and won. Um, earlier this year, I was appointed by Speaker Coughlin to serve on the Gaming and Tourism Committee, which uh, the sports betting landed in, in, in our committee. And I lended my voice, my advocacy, and vote to, to allow the sports betting to be allowed here in New Jersey, and we're making way now. Uh, the governor just uh, opened up down in Monmouth Park and uh, submitted his first bet. And we look to bring between 12 and $17 million a year for the next three years here in the state of New Jersey. The governor's office is uh, estimated about $13 million. That's what's estimated in the budget yeah. that's being proposed? Mm -hmm being discussed now. And that's just, just a new revenue stream that we've never had. And so when you look at the state of affairs and the state budget and the state of affairs here in the state of New Jersey, you know, those types of small pieces there uh, matter and it helps. It helps fund, you know, a lot of the things that we want to do here in the state of New Jersey. So what without, was it like, uh, Assemblyman, on the on the committee hearings, were there people for it and against it? I mean, you know, mostly people were for it because right. you can go to other states, you know, Nevada and uh, several other states around the country to do that. And our folks were leaving to go play in other places. And or, Delaware just started. Yeah. And yeah. the black market, of course, is out there. No one wants to really get caught in, in, in contribute to that but now we have an opportunity uh, to have that here in our state and it was a very meaningful time to serve on that committee a very meaningful conversations that I had with the casino lobbyists and others that were involved in it. and I'm just glad that we were able to get so, past so that. So you mentioned the black market which is interesting do you think do you think bookies and other things go out of business? Or I don't really? think they ever go out of business right. but I think they take a hit um, but uh, what's better than taking a hit and giving that money back to the state of New Jersey for funding our education, funding us, our schools, funding various things that we're going to be able to spend that money on for so our state. So how does it work? How does, the, how does the state get their money? Is it based on a bet and the winnings? Based on bet. It's placed on the bet and the, the tax that is involved in the, the whole broader uh, scheme of the, uh, of the sports betting. So we stand to get about 13, and, and, and it's gone into effect, right? So Yep, last Thursday it went into effect. And uh, it was a good ceremony for everyone involved, and uh, we're just all happy that we can get that past us now. And get so, it's something. I mean, you've been, you were the mayor of Roselle, which is interesting. And Piscataway just adopted a ordinance banning gun sales and everything. And when you you were the mayor, you took a stance on mm -hmm. gun control. Mm -hmm. uh, mayor against illegal guns. Mm -hmm. Uh, recent news, Governor Murphy passed a few bills. Mm -hmm. Any of these bills come through your committee? What was your role I was in actually, some of these bills? I was actually a sponsor mayor of the gun bills, uh, requiring background checks at private gun sales, limiting the ammunition. I stood very f firm when I was a mayor, along with you and others, uh, Mayor Mani the late Mayor Manito from Boston, uh, former Mayor Michael Bloomberg from New York City, and we raised these issues uh, countrywide. And uh, it was easy for me to then step into the assembly with uh, these issues still lingering on. New Jersey already has some of the toughest gun laws, but you know, it's nothing wrong with getting tougher on these laws. Uh, and I was a proud sponsor along with Majority Leader uh, Lou Greenwald, uh, and we pa passed the package of bills and the governor signed them immediately. And so now New Jersey is one of the best states in the country that has some of the toughest gun laws here. And you know, Mayor, when you were the mayor, and as well as still in public life, our biggest challenge is the illegal guns, the guns that flow across state lines and mm -hmm. wind up in the hands of thugs on the streets. And we consistently say that the Second Amendment has a right 
to exist naturally. Nobody's challenging the Second Amendment. Everybody wants to have a gun. Why do we need AR-15s, though? You know? We don't, and those are to hurt people honestly, and to kill people dramatically. They're not shooting deer and pheasant not, with Not at all. They're shooting in our neighborhoods and they're shooting all around. And, and uh, we have to focus a lot more now on that mental health piece um, because I think that's an issue. I don't think people just want to go and do that. There's a, there's a piece that's, that's missing. But uh, as we go forward with these gun laws and, and the advocacy, uh, I will tell you that uh, we're, you've been a great partner in, in all of that. Um, we can't control every situation. In fact, we most likely can't control none of them. But we can try to put things in place and make a better perspective on why these things are dangerous in our communities and why we shouldn't have them in our so communities. You, and you talk about the mental health issue, yet you also have Chris Christie and Donald Trump who say we have to attack the mental health issue, but they propose budgets that, that cut the funding of those areas. All the time. Yeah. You know, it's like they speak on one thing and, and not the other, but you know what we've been dealing with. You've been very active in D.C. in your mayoral role and United States Conference of Mayors. You're doing a wonderful job there. And so we got to continue to advocate. We got to continue to let our residents and constituents know that, you know, these policy makers are in place because we don't engage ourselves at the level that we should. And that means activating ourselves in the community with registering to vote, actually registering to vote and then go out and participate in the voting, but continue that. And I know that you've been a staunch supporter of making sure that we register people to vote and they actually get out. I mean, this past year and the year before, uh, with the presidential election, folks never just didn't come out, and we got to stop that, and we got to really participate in that. And yeah, it's our it's civic some, responsibility. It's a tough question. You know, for 12 years, Trenton has had this all all night arts festival, and you often question what can happen at nights. But we're talking about young kids mm -hmm. who who did artwork. We're talking about artwork that was performed by schools, and they showed off to the community as a way of healing things in the community mm -hmm. for 12 years and then that tragedy last week breaks out in Trenton during the All Nights Arts Festival yeah. and the only people who are deceased are the ones who started it mm -hmm. but something like 20 something other people were injured. injured. Yeah. yeah it's a sad and it's a horrific situation we got to continue to keep the, those individuals in prayer but continue our fight and continue our advocacy to, to ensure that you know we don't ha we get these guns off the street, Mayor. So switching gears, legalization mm -hmm. of marijuana yeah. is a hot issue, mm -hmm. and um, New York City just recently announced that if you're caught with marijuana, you're going to get a hundred dollar fine. Mm -hmm. And an awful lot of people, uh, mostly of color or of Hispanic origin, have faced jail time in the past. Uh, legalization of marijuana is not just as easy as saying, okay, go out and smoke a joint in the streets. Tell us about not only your efforts, but what's going on in Trenton on this issue. So uh, I've taken on this responsibility in the lower house assisting Senator Nick Scutari in the Senate, who's been the leader over this issue over the last few years. I've been visiting many other states. Um, you know, Mayor, I, I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion of supporting the legalization of marijuana, uh, not just off the cuff, but because of my visits and because of the individuals that that look like me in prison and that don't look like me that, that are in prison. And we can turn a blind eye to the, to, to the issue that it's not happening in our neighborhoods, and it is. And so we can be a part of thrusting ourselves in the conversation, and that's what I chose to do. And uh, we're working very hard on this issue with the legalization of marijuana. Uh, my amendments that I'm proposing uh, has an immediate expungement process for individuals. Uh, also, uh, moving forward, that it will just be civil penalties as opposed to uh, penalties of jail time. Uh, and, and, and providing opportunities for minorities and women to participate in this billion dollar industry uh, here uh, across the country that we will have this in the state of New Jersey. It's been taking some time, but that's okay. On this issue, I believe that we should take our time. We shouldn't try to rush this and get this through to the governor's desk just for political reasoning. I think that we should flush this through and uh, the senator, uh, Senator Skatari, myself and the speaker and the leader has been working very closely on this issue to come up with a very good product to move this forward because it's happening in our communities anyway. So why not try to regulate it? Uh, give some folks some relief and tax, uh, it. And tax it as well to provide uh, revenues and uh, revenue stream in our in our community. And I have in my in my 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 proposal, you know, funding for homelessness, funding for uh, domestic violence, funding for things that matter to their communities are affecting our communities. So legalization um, of marijuana. The goal is also to drive the black market away. Absolutely. You know, it's so there. 
the, the black market is running the show now, mm -hmm. but just just legalizing it and without expungements, how do you? If tens of thousands of people with just simple marijuana arrests. Absolutely, I, and and I can't support it unless it has that component. I cannot, you know, just sit by, vote for a legalization, and in the meantime, you know, individuals are still incarcerated uh, in jail for small amounts. I mean, well, one of the things we talked about uh, off camera was. <clears throat> What happens if you've been convicted of marijuana possession, but you've also committed a major burglary or mm -hmm. carjacking or homicide? Yeah. Then, you know, getting the expungement on the marijuana is minimal, but, you know, it's just another way of tacking on. But if you're guilty of those other crimes, and. If yeah. you're guilty of those other crimes, as are other crimes that don't deal with marijuana, we can't you know, provide expungement for those types of seriousness no. of crimes. But marijuana has been used medically. Uh, we're expanding it here in the state. We have, in fact, and, and, and in our current bills, uh, we're looking to expand it even more with the support of the governor. And so uh, it was more about legalization to me. It was more than just going out and just having individuals go and just purchase pot. But it was about, you know, the social equity piece, the piece that, you know, is, is, is hurting our communities of individuals who look like me and who don't look like me and are still incarcerated for small amounts that should be relieved from that and be able to participate in the industry and have their lives back, be able to come back in the community and be productive citizens of the community. We're going to take a break or something and come back and talk more about things going on in Trenton and the 20th Legislative District. Thank you. Please stay with us after these messages. Back with more with Assemblyman Jamel Holly. We're an American original. Dependable. Historic. Nuanced. With all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed. A place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started. Welcome back to our city where I'm joined by Mr. Jamel Holly, the Assemblyman from the 20th Legislative District here in Union County. Assemblyman, one of the things you uh, uh, recently discussed with your colleagues in Trenton was introducing or renaming a part of Route 27, which is us folks in Elizabeth called St. George Avenue, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, maybe you and Roselle too, right? Same yes, street? Same St. Yeah. George Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, and it runs through Union County as the Jerry Green Memorial Highway. But wh what made you decide this? And tell our viewers a little bit about Jerry Green. He was on this show years ago, but tell us about Jerry Green. Jerry Green, I tell you, was a stand-up guy, a guy who uh, was a community individual, uh, more not a, more so a, a guy that you can just talk to on a general basis. It wasn't always about politics with Jerry. And he grew up in Roselle, uh, where I was uh, a member of the community there. He graduated from the same high school. And he just participated and contributed so much in Roselle, Union County, and the state of New Jersey. And I thought that it would be very fitting to rename parts of St. George Avenue, uh, Jerry Green Memorial High. He owned several businesses along that route. He hung out as a kid. We hung out as kids on, on that route. Right. And I just think that portion uh, should be remembered uh, by our late assemblyman who contributed so much to the great growth of Roselle and the County of Union and the state of New Jersey. But not only was he assembly, he was the chairman of the Union County Democratic Party for a while. Yes. Five or six years, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, did he start off as an assemblyman or did he start off in the council somewhere? He started off as a freeholder. Oh, as a freeholder. Yeah, started, Union County right. uh, freeholder board and later rose to the assemblyman uh, in the 21st legislative district in Plainfield, New Jersey, and uh, rose to the ranks of our county Democratic chairman where you and I uh, had the opportunity of working with him on our Democratic priorities. And hence the reason why I'm here as a state assemblyman. Uh, when the vacancy opened up, you all played a critical role in that and allowing me to, you know, move into that position and, you know, serve the people of the 20th legislative district. So tell us, you, in the first part of the show, you mentioned some of the committees, uh, the, the gaming and tourism committee. What, what other committees are you on? I'm also the vice chair of Homeland Security, where I get the opportunity to survey and uh, tour it around the, the state of New Jersey on our safety of our homeland. Uh, I've done a first run, and we're looking pretty great, Mayor. Uh, the border which we uh, live in uh, on New Jersey Turnpike has been deemed one of the uh, dangerous uh, roadways. Frank Lattenberg called it the two most dangerous miles in America. It is, uh, in particular also on, on, on the East Coast. So we, I've done a great tour of the ports and how that all 
uh, is operated, and uh, we're looking pretty good here in the staff. I feel very safe. Uh, I was very fortunate that the speaker chose me to fill that position, and uh, just recently last week he appointed me to serve on the health committee, uh, where I have an opportunity to uh, meet with several uh, hosp hospital uh, administrators, uh, continue to look out for Trinitas Hospital, which is right here in the great city of, of, of Elizabeth, and uh, I've replaced Jerry Green on that committee. Uh, the speaker replaced me with, uh, with uh, replaced myself with, for, in Jerry Green's spot on that. So I'm very honored for those positions, but I don't take those lightly because we do have some serious health issues that can, that have occurred, uh, that can occur, and I just want to be in the forefront of being a voice and being a continued advocate for those for, for those reasons. And uh, going to, you just came back from somewhere, Middle yeah. East. Yeah, I was in China. China. Yeah, that's the Far East. Yeah, I Never was mind in China. The East. That's the Far East. Were <laughs> Not you there the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, no, this was my first time in China, and I had the opportunity of meeting the mayor of Beijing and the vice uh, president of governors there. Uh, we toured. Uh, King University has a great institution there. Were you there? Um, I was there. I attended the graduation, uh, met with several officials there to continue our partnership that we have here at King USA with Wenzhou Kane University in uh, China. And let me tell you something, that experience for any student, whether they're from New Jersey or from America, or the, the, the student in China looking to come here, what a great partnership. And I went to continue uh, the conversation uh, with the local officials, because their local government helps fund their colleges there, uh, versus what we do here in the state of New Jersey, where our state uh, universities are funded through taxpayers' dollars in the state of New Jersey. And so I wanted to just continue to lend a voice there to support our president here, President Dawood Farai, who's doing an amazing job here, but also to, can, to, to help with the relationship there in China, in Beijing, and Wenzhou. Wenzhou, uh, China, to continue their efforts. Uh, but give, is did you get to talk that? to any students? I did. I spent a considerable amount of time with the students. In fact, that was the majority of my time. Uh, just to kind of hear some of the different cultures, to hear some of the things that they experience and why they really appreciate America. It's totally different there. And when you talk to American students, they say the same thing about China, how it's totally different, how it's opened up. Uh, their eyes and and the students were able to engage each other on different things that they're confronted with as students and the students from the U.S. can help with the students in China and the Chinese students can help with the students in the U.S. Incredible, incredible experience. I will go back again uh, and I want our continued support to be lent to, to King University, continue that partnership. You're a graduate of King University. I am yeah. and you also as well. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we taught together. Uh, I know. <laughs> your class I know. was right next door to mine. I was out, I was out a little <laughs> before you though. <laughs> So, so besides, was that the favorite part of your trip, meeting with the students? It was. And, and going out to the city, you know, you get a chance to just explore uh, different places, you know. And it, it opened up my mind. A kid coming from Roselle, you know, we often didn't have that opportunity to, you know, travel only down to the shore, maybe get to Florida, uh, to Disney World, but to really travel around the entire world. Uh, China and Israel and, and India. It, it's just been a credible experience, man. I've been very blessed, and I would definitely do it again. So one of the questions, and I, I've never served except for the city council as the mayor, but you, you're in state government. Uh, I like being the mayor. I, I guess you could tell that, right? I've been here Absolutely. But you do good at it, mayor. Yeah, so tell me the <laughs> difference between being the mayor and being the state assemblyman. Well, mayor, I think you know that being a mayor is a 24-hour job, and at any given moment, things can change, uh, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning, with the gun calls or two o'clock in the afternoon with a tree that has fallen. You know, a mayor's job, you, you never really sleep. Uh, but the assembly is a little less risk of all of that. Uh, I get to sleep a little bit more. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's more so engaging with the local officials like you who are able to provide us with your needs, your wants, the resources that you need. And being a local mayor, I have the ability to go down with that experience to get my colleagues to understand that this is necessary. This is necessary for the townships, this is necessary for the cities, this is necessary for the urban school districts. And I think that's why we've had so much success with working with you, Mayor, because you've been able to provide that, that level of interest to us as well as us to you. And with the experience that I had as a local mayor, it just benefits it all. And I'm appreciative of your so support. So let me tell you, let me ask a personal question. Sure. I know you're on Twitter. I'm on, who are the <laughs> Holly Dollies? Holly Dollies are my nieces. Uh, we've been fortunate to get our fourth nieces. I'm, I'm come from a family of three brothers. So it was never girls in the family all at boys. all. All boys. And so now my brothers are having 
all girls. Uh, and we named them all Jay. Uh, Josiah is the oldest. She attends Elizabeth Public Schools. Janai is uh, the second, and she attends Elizabeth Public Schools. And they've both been honored by the school system here in the city of Elizabeth for honor scholars. Our third one is Jersey, uh, ironically. Her name is Jersey. She's one years old. And we have a two month old, and uh, her name is Jada. So the three boys, Jamel, Jesse, and Joseph, now has four girls. It's Josiah, Janiah, Jersey, and Jada. Some live in Texas? One. 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 One lives in Texas, the, other, in Texas. the others are here. Yeah, in your, in your Dallas Cowboy area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesse, your brother played with the yeah, Cowboys. Brother played for Dallas for three years. He's now working. Uh, for them in the front office working with their communications team mostly assigned to the radio CBS radio So he's able to criticize and you know do sporting uh, on the radio and he's having a great time there He's never moving back to Jersey. However, he loves Dallas uh, he, My mom loves it. The, the, my family loves it there. And so so your mom's there. My mom is there She's a former resident also of uh, the city of Elizabeth. And she's moved down to Dallas as well So Dallas. from Elizabeth to Dallas where you're a Dallas Cowboys fan. I've been so a Cowboys fan since, <laughs> since I was a little boy so it's interesting, and you know, I, I remember watching your brother play and texting you back and forth when the games were on. I remember we caught that pass one time too. It's the 49ers, the 49ers. on the one yard line. Yeah, the one yard. Never yeah, forget. He, made it to the one. he was running out of gas. <laughs> yes, a little bit he did there. run out of gas. <laughs> he ran out of gas. So, um, so I want to wish you continued success in the assembly and representing us in the 20th district. I know you work hard for all of the issues that affect the four towns and, and I appreciate your commitment. Uh, you know, it's 2018, they got a long way to go. What do you think happens with the budget? You think it gets done? Mayor, I'm hoping that we continue to have a, the dialogue that we need to have to pass a responsible budget. Uh, a government shutdown is good for nobody. Not a Democrat, not a Republican, not the governor, not the Senate president, not the speaker, not the members of the legislature. I'm just hoping that we can continue these conversations so that, uh, you know, everyone's not going to agree on everything. But that you've been in politics a long time. You never get all what you want. you got to compromise at some level. Um, I'm just hoping that... Uh, the leadership can get together on this and provide us with a, a reasonable budget that we can vote on that, that takes care of a lot of the issues that uh, we've been advocating for with school funding, which uh, Elizabeth set to receive a half a, a billion dollars by 2025. Our DMV is also included in there. And all the other nonprofit monies that we uh, provide back to the city of Elizabeth and the district to service our constituents. And, and that's all I'm advocating for. Senator, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show this evening. Thank you, and Mayor. wish you luck as our representative in Trenton. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. For Assemblyman Jamel Holly, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. We have some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University.